Hey everybody, it is Kellen Nitro from Nitromaniac TV's wrestling channel, and this is my take on Wrestling Dontaku 2019 uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling Weekend Festival. It wasn't so much a card as it was two cards on two nights to help uh, celebrate the Dontaku Festival in Fukuoka, Japan on May 3rd and 4th, 2019. Uh, the event was broadcast worldwide on njpwworld.com, and that's how I watched uh, all the action kind of unfurl here. Now, this will be a little bit different than past Nitro takes, where I go match by match and let you know what is what I thought of each match and what happened and everything. Just because the bulk of the matches that took place on this card were um, six and eight man tags, that's pretty much it. I mean, the only real two big things to talk about out of the tag matches are uh, the video that played at the end of the two multi-man matches that Juice Robinson was involved in this weekend. Uh, apparently at the end of the best of the junior sh uh, super juniors, so I think it is June 5th, uh, there will be a unknown challenger to Juice and to NJPW uh, making a debut or a return. We're not exactly sure which. Uh, all we know is that the vignettes look like we're shot in a pub. I want to say in Vegas or Reno or something like that. And uh, the guy is rocking a leather jacket that says Death Rider on the back of it. So either Johnny Bravo is coming to <laughs> take on Juice Robinson or we're getting a brand new person. Uh, is it a... A Japanese strong style athlete from another promotion that's a new freelancer that has just signed with New Japan we'll have to take a look and see is it Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley I don't think so but y you never know on that is it somebody from Impact is it I've heard the name Ace Austin being bantered about and that stuff uh, we'll have to wait and see exactly what uh, unfurls off of that. Uh, put your guesses below. Who do you think Juice will be challenging? Uh, I, I would assume that the gauntlet will be dropped at uh, the final of the Best of Super Juniors night. Or the final night of the Best of Super Juniors, I should say. And uh, made for Dominion just a few nights later because I think Dominion is on the 9th of June. And this is the 5th of June we're talking about. So 6, 7, 8, 9. So about 4 days later or 5 days later, whatever it is. The second most notable thing to come out of these tag matches. And actually there's three of them. I lied. There's there's one more on top of this. But the debut of El Fantasmo as the newest member of Bullet Club. Uh, a guy that uh, I had seen a little bit of growing up here in Western Canada and that stuff. Uh, he's an ECCW uh, graduate, uh, spent a lot of time in that system, did a lot of Pacific Cup tournaments in the day and, uh, and everything, and uh, has, you know, evolved his career. He's gone over to the UK, Rev Pro, and that stuff. Uh, pretty much Bullet Club now has their own version of Will Ospreay. Uh, you know, as, as a lot of El Fantasmo fans would hate for me to say it, uh, I think that they are so similar looking and, and such similar athletes that. Uh, I think Bullet Club now has a version of Will Ospreay that, uh, you know, even Ospreay could maybe look at and say, oh, maybe that was me about two or three years earlier, right? So um, it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Uh, no doubt a one-on-one -on -one between the two of them is inevitable in New Japan, uh, whether that happens at Dominion or further on we'll see uh, of course this is all best of the super junior so are we looking at the two finalists for the best of the super juniors tournament uh we'll have to wait and see with that but yep el phantasmo the newest member of bullet club uh, made official and again a new and again another fact that makes me happy is we have a canadian in bullet club and a western canadian no less this time uh one could argue with kenny omega being a western canadian but manitoba is kind of a central province anyway uh I, I guess it's kind of the gateway to the West. We'll just put it that way. But, uh, you know, Vancouver is as far West as you can get, <laughs> you know, before dropping into the ocean. So uh, great to see for sure. And then the third thing that kind of blew out of these tag matches is we now have a date for the return match for the IWGP Intercontinental title. It will be at, it'll now be in Dominion on 6-9 in Osaka where Tatsuya Naito will get his rematch for the IWGP Intercontinental title against the champion Kota Ibushi. And kind of a flip-flop here. The crowd kind of more with Naito on this side than uh, Ibushi. It seems like Ibushi might be turning a little bit of a, of a heel, just a uh, heel persona, not of his own doing, just due to the fact that the crowd seems to prefer Naito a little bit more over than Ibushi right now. At least that's how I read it. 
Uh, throw your comments below on that as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But that will be a great match. That's That should have been the main event, but as we'll talk about later on, uh, the main event scene for Dominion got turned upside down with an announcement later on in the night. Going back to night one, kind of a double main event on night one with two title matches to close off the card. We have a brand new Never Openweight Champion as Tai Chi defeats Jeff Cobb. So Tai Chi gets the Never Openweight title. Uh, it's a belt that he had set his sights on. But now, again, he is not the hunter. He is the hunted. And uh, will Suzuki Goon uh, do everything in their power to hold on to it? And how does the boss of Suzuki Goon, Minoru Suzuki, feel about Tai Chi holding on to the never open weight belt. Uh, Jeff Cobb, of course, was the champion. He won it at MSG. I saw that live over Will Ospreay uh, in that title for title scenario, and um, it, you know, was a fairly decent run for Jeff. I think uh, it just, you know, maybe the uh, the the fact that the North American run for now for over a month or so is going to be kind of you know, well, this month it's all about the junior heavyweights and everything like that, and so that might be, allow Jeff to get back to North America, take more North American bookings and such, and focus more on the ROH World Television title, which he still holds. So, uh, you know, it was a good run with him. He's proven that he can hold it. I'm sure there'll be a rematch somewhere down the line for that belt, but uh, yeah, it was a little bit shorter than I wanted it to be, but alas, Tai Chi is your new never open weight champion. Then we had an amazing match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight belt between Dragon Lee and Taji Ishimori. Now, of course, Ishimori was not pinned in that triple threat match at MSG. It was Dragon Lee pinning Bandito for the 1-2 free count for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight belt. So, uh, of course, this is a perfect lead into the best of Super Juniors tournament, I think, uh, with Dragon Lee retaining the belt over Taji Ishimori. An amazing match. Go on and see it if you haven't had a chance get out there and take a look at it uh amazing match great storytelling by both uh individuals in that match uh, ishimori is like a fine wine just gets better with age and dragon lee is going to be a star uh over the next 10 years or so uh, just the man is amazing a lot of tributes for hiromu takahashi in this match as well uh including dragon lee walking out with uh hiromu's old uh cmll mask that he wore uh, with his former persona in CMLL, and uh, that, uh, ironically, Dragon Lee had won in a mask versus mask match, you know, uh, some years before. But I know his fans and his well-wishers, and of course, uh, you know, myself, even, uh, passing on all the best for Hiromo in his time of recovery. I, uh, you know, and hopefully we'd like to see him at an event here soon, just even... Uh, just outside of the ring, just maybe to address the crowd, just to tell people how he's doing and that stuff. Uh, I think a lot of people would love to, uh, you know, check up on him almost a year after the injury occurred because I think that injury, you know, happened when was long was it Long Beach or San Francisco last year? I think it was San Francisco, and he got, uh, you know, severely hurt in that match with Dragon Lee. So, uh, ergo, we would love to hear from him. Uh, maybe that happens at Dentaku or not Dentaku, but at Dominion. Night two ended with two really epic matchups. Uh, one was non-title, but it was just awesome. It was a throwback to the old school strong style uh, days of yore between Evil and Tomohiro Ishii. Uh, let's. This is like watching Ishii and Suzuki. Uh, you know, work Evil in there and give them a freeway or a triangle match. That would be amazing. Uh, just two guys just pounding the heck out of each other. Yeah, such a fun match to watch. Uh, and Ishii got the wind over Evil, but not for Evil's lack of trying. And uh, Evil's getting over. He's Since that match with Jericho last year and the whole deal, uh, I think that uh, Evil is on the cusp of breaking into the main event scene in New Japan. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, if the with the next move or the next drop-off, I think we'll see Evil maybe uh, break into that cusp. And what does that mean for LIJ? and so forth and maybe we get a Naito evil feud somewhere down the line in 2020 or something who knows and Ishii is just tough as nails you can put him anywhere on the card and he's pretty happy with whoever he's got so uh you know long live both these guys they're amazing performers and great wrestlers 
And of course, the main event for the IWGP World Heavyweight title, Kazuchika Okada taking on Sonata, and Okada defeating Sonata in just over 38 minutes, 38.03, of a fairly epic match. You know, I really like the one uh, at MSG a lot better than this one here. Uh, however, Sonata and Okada have great chemistry in the ring. It was uh, an amazing uh, back and forth encounter. There was a couple times there where you actually thought that, holy crap, Sonata is going to walk out with the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. And, uh, you know, that was the whole deal. The whole prevailing storyline was something like, Okada and Sonata have met five times before, and Sonata's 0-5, now 0-6 against Okada, which means that win is due to happen. <laughs> it's just that uh, Okada's been booked so strongly in those matchups prior, and of course the last time they had met prior to this was the final of the New Japan Cup, which crowned the number one contender for MSG uh, you know, in the month of February or whatever it was. So, so all in all throughout night one and night two, uh, I'll give the entirety of the wrestling Dontaku event, uh, average between the two of them. I'd give it like an eight out of 10. I, th I think I'd give the first night, maybe a seven and then this night a nine. So maybe just break it in the middle, be about eight, 8.5, probably an eight. <laughs> uh, just the second night was way stronger than the first night I fought uh, because, of course, you had a lot of questions to answers. You have a lot more answers to some questions that were coming into this. Uh, we saw the feud continue between Liger and Suzuki a little bit. Uh, we've seen that was on night one. And on uh, night two, Liger getting his final match in Fukuoka, which is a huge city for him uh, because I think... That's where Liger had headquartered himself uh, for a long time during the 90s and the 2000s. So, um, you know, it's almost like a hometown for him. And, uh, like, you know, going back to wrestle in front of a hometown crowd one last time. And that, of course, is probably the last time we would see Liger during a Duntaku event. Because with the announcement that he will be wrapping up his career at this year's Wrestle Kingdom, uh, January 4th and 5th, 2020, in Tokyo... Uh, this is kind of the final shot, the final chance you get to see Liger. So if you got tickets to go see him at any event that he is booked for this year, uh, don't miss it. Go check it out because the man is a legend. Anyways, I'm Kellen Nitro. Later days, happy wrestling watching. Uh, get caught up and watch some New Japan Pro Wrestling. And, oh, I've almost forgot. This is the, the one caveat, the one thing, too. We'll, I'll talk about this very briefly towards the end. As I'm wrapping up, I'm going to do this. Uh, after the Okada match, the lights dim and we get a video from Chris Jericho announcing that the main event for Dominion is going to be Chris Jericho versus Okada. And Chris Jericho is going to win, you know. And uh, uh, it's kind of cool uh, reading between the lines of a lot of people on line and that's the thinking that this is the start of the working relationship between New Japan and AEW. Um, I think that... In Jericho's case, it kind of reflects back to maybe the contract that he signed with AEW, that it's not an AEW exclusive contract, that he can go out and work independent dates and Japan dates if he wants, uh, and of course, tour with Fozzie, and that's a, because, again, Jericho is the ultimate freelancer at this point in his career, and, um, you know, part on that, I think to blame is the creative... Uh, that was given to conclude the Owens Jericho feud leading into WrestleMania 33 in Orlando a couple of years ago, uh, where that program should have been the Universal Title program, and instead got downgraded to a U.S. Title program, I believe. And um, unfortunately, uh, you know, because they moved the Universal Title onto Goldberg and Lesnar of all things. Uh, which was definitely the weaker story going into Mania than you had, um, you know, with Jericho and Owens because they built that thing up so beautifully. It was it was ripe for the picking for an epic match for the Universal Title, and they take away the Universal Title off of that. So I think some of it kind of stems from that, and most of it, in my opinion, is just Jericho's desire as an artist to grow and and be. The fact that he's booked himself with New Japan to do this is not a surprise at all to me. Uh, what will be really surprising is uh, we have to watch now exactly how this unfolds because he's got the rematch with Omega on May 25th at the AEW Double or Nothing pay-per-view. Um, 
now my way too early prediction for that would have Jericho defeating Omega to build some momentum to go to Dominion to take on Okada. Uh, and I think Okada would probably beat Jericho here. Um, however, I do see a scenario where Okada loses the IWGP belt and Jericho walks back into AEW with it uh, just so we can get potentially a Omega Jericho free or maybe somewhere down the line a Jericho... Um, man, I don't know. With all the talent coming into AEW, who they have, maybe a Jericho Moxley if if uh, Ambrose Moxley decides to sign there or what for that belt or you know even something else down the line uh it opens up doors it really does and uh that's all that new japan has been about lately and that's all that AEW will seem to be about as well but it's a good harbinger of things to come i think that there will be a working relationship announced between new japan pro wrestling and all elite wrestling uh i think it's just a matter of time until we see it all right, now I'm going to wrap up. Later days, happy wrestling watching, take care easy, and we'll see you next time on Nitromaniac TV's wrestling channel.